All right, next question. This, this is a good one. How do you say no to projects or clients that you wouldn't like to work with? I actually had this situation last week. Um, it is a really hard thing to do, to tell somebody that you don't want to shoot their product. Um, the way that I do it now, however, is so last week I asked you guys to send in your questions for today's video and you guys gave me some banger questions. So I'm going to be answering those in today's video. It's pretty much on the topic of business and photography. So stick around to the very end because there are some really good questions that have come up. And if you're new here, I'm Amanda and I'm a brand photographer based in Brisbane, Australia. Essentially, I help other product photographers, brand photographers scale and grow their business. So if you want to dive deeper into this topic, I do have a course called Become a Brand Photographer, which goes way more in depth into everything from how to take your photos, how to edit in Photoshop, how to book clients, how to pitch yourself, just like everything really. So I'll leave a link in the description box below if you're interested in that. And you can also use the code YouTube for 10% off. Otherwise, go follow me on Instagram at Amanda Campianu. I share so much more on there with you guys about my personal life, more behind the scenes tips and tricks. So if you're interested, let's connect. But let's get stuck into the video. Okay, first question. Do you store all your raw images even after the client work is done? Love your work, by the way. Thank you so much. Um, I do, but I also delete them after a certain period of time because when you're buying hard drive after hard drive, it kind of gets a little expensive, especially when you're paying like $250 per hard drive. We probably have about eight hard drives at the moment storing all of our data. So after about a year, I will delete raw photos from a client's folder. I will keep the edited photos but I'll delete the raws because when you're on a photo shoot, it's really easy to get very snap happy. I, I know I still do that from time to time and I could take like a hundred photos in an hour or more and then they're just sitting there doing nothing. So it's taking up valuable space on your hard drive, your SSD drives. So it's really important that you do a cull, I think every, every six months to 12 months and you just get rid of stuff that you know you'll never use again and make sure that your clients download their photos. It's very important. Okay, second question. How do you get contracts with brands? I haven't had any luck with cold calls. So this question um, is pretty much asking like, how do you book a client, I think? And so many of you ask this question, how do you get your first paying client as a brand photographer? So firstly, being able to pitch yourself is one of the most invaluable skills that you can have as a brand photographer. Now, if you're not confident with your pitching, I recommend two things. Either join my course, Become a Brand Photographer, where I teach you how to pitch. There's a pitching template in there as well. Otherwise, I also recommend booking a coaching call with a lovely lady named Kirsten. She is from a company called Always Services. I booked a coaching call with her actually about a month ago on my cold email outreach because I really wanted to refine it and just come across a lot more professional and just, just nail it, you know? She was a world of help. So I booked an hour call with her and we pretty much mapped out every single step in the pitching process that I should be doing. So I highly recommend if you are not confident with pitching, book a call with Kirsten, you will not regret it. So then once you're confident with your pitching, you can start to reach out to brands that you want to work with. Hot tip, do not DM them on Instagram. Please email. It is much more professional and you are more likely to have your email be read. Now, if you are just starting out in your career, one of the best things that you can do is do free collaborations. When I started, I did about 30 collaborations over the span of like two to three months. And out of those collabs, I got my first paying clients. What this does, it helps you to build your portfolio. It helps you to learn what you love shooting and don't love shooting. It helps you to build your workflow and your processes, like drawing up your creative brief, drawing up your contracts, how to communicate with clients well, how to deliver your galleries, all those things. So I highly recommend if you do not have a portfolio, that's your first place to start is working for free. I'm a big advocate of that. However, there is a time and place where you must stop working for free. And I'll do a whole other video on that in the future. I have actually done a whole video on how to book clients and I'll link it to you guys here so you can go and check that out. 
Okay, next question. Is it important to have a website for your product photography business? Yes, 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 yes. A website helps to build that trust factor between you and your potential customer. They wanna see your portfolio. They wanna see more about you. They wanna see how you represent yourself. And in my own personal opinion, if I came across a service where it said in their Instagram bio, DM me for prices, I wouldn't. I much prefer to email somebody. I think it's much more professional and I think it's just a better way to do business. So yes, I definitely think you should get a website as soon as possible. If you're serious about doing brand photography, build a website ASAP. All right, next question. When starting you as a product photographer, is it okay to do collaboration rather than paid work? Absolutely, yes. And this is exactly how I got my start in my career and it's how I got my first paying clients. Like I said before though, there is a time and place where you must stop offering to do free shoots. Um, because what this does is if you keep doing free stuff and your prices are really low, you're not constantly revaluing your prices, um, this hurts the industry. It hurts every other photographer out there because what you're doing is you're creating false expectations for brands that good quality content should either be free or should cost like peanuts. So make sure that you are assessing your prices every six to 12 months. As your skills increase, your prices must increase. So overall, once you've got your portfolio, you've got some photos in there that you can start marketing yourself with, that's when you need to start pitching yourself and start going after paid work. All right, next question is, what do you do when you work with a brand that doesn't have defined colors in their products? Every single brand definitely has one, at least one color that they've used in their packaging. So I think that you can still ascertain like what colors you can start with if they're not giving you much information on the brief. I have had quite a few clients say like, um, I'm not really sure what my color palette is or oh, I love all colors. I'm like, well, let's break it down. Let's choose one to two key colors that are in your packaging, are on your website, are on your Instagram feed. Let's start with that. All right, next question. This, this is a good one. How do you say no to projects or clients that you wouldn't like to work with? I actually had this situation last week. Um, it is a really hard thing to do, to tell somebody that you don't wanna shoot their product. Um, the way that I do it now, however, is you know, I'm very polite and friendly about it. You know, you don't wanna just come out and say to them, oh, sorry, but I just, I don't wanna shoot your product. Like I'm personally not interested in, in your product. That's not the right way to go. So usually what I say is, look, unfortunately, I don't feel like this project is aligned with me. Um, however, I can recommend so, so, and so photographer to help you with your project. For my calls become a brand photographer for inquiries that I either do not have availability for, um, inquiries that I don't wanna take on personally, I will push these paid opportunities now to my students. So I'll post in our Facebook group when a paid opportunity arises and I will ask them, please email me through your portfolio and your contact details and I will forward these to my client. All right, this next question is best books for starting your business. Oh guys, I have a few good ones. These are my favorites. So. If you follow me on Instagram, you will know I'm really, really big on money mindset because I just think if you are not willing to invest in yourself and your business, it is really gonna stunt your growth. And for the first year of my business, I did not invest, I was very scared, and I realized I had a lot of money blocks that I needed to deal with. Ever since I dealt with those, yes, I spent more money on my business, but I earned way more money in my business. You gotta spend money to make money. It's very, very true. So my favorite books are, number one, Get Rich, Lucky Bitch by Denise Duffield Thomas. It's all about manifestation. So if you're not into like kind of like woo-woo stuff, like manifestation, then this probably isn't for you. But it is an amazing read and she's inc like incredibly relatable. So I highly recommend that one. Now, while we're on the topic of money mindset, these are two books that you must, must, must read. Like these are the ones that got me through my money blocks and these are the, like these are really partly the reason I feel like I am where I am today. There's so much dust on these, oh my God. Um, so this one is called You're a Badass at Making Money by Jen Sincero. 
just read it. Read it, read it now. And then this one, Secrets of a Millionaire Mind by T. Harv Eker. Uh, this one just cemented everything for me. It's got a lot of like really great money affirmations and basically compares poor people to rich people and what their mindset is like. There's also in these two activities that you can do at the end of each chapter, do the activities because that's when you're actually gonna be doing the work on your own money blocks and that's when you're gonna start releasing them. For example, when I was growing up, I heard a lot, oh, we can't afford that, money doesn't grow in trees. And I would be very discouraged to buy myself a cup of coffee because I'd be like, I can't afford that. And it's $4. So, so it's really about reprogramming all those things that you heard growing up, all those statements that your parents might have told you and reconditioning yourself to believe the opposite. So instead of saying, I can't afford that, you say, how can I afford that? All right, next question. Can you please explain how to go about creating a contract or what to include? Yes. Now, if you do need a contract template already done for you, it's inside my course, Become a Brand Photographer. So if you're a student in there, go to the resources section, all the templates are there for you. Um, but essentially there are some key things that you wanna be including in your contract. So one of those things is the deliverable. What are you giving to the client? How many photos do you have to um, shoot out on location? Are you using a model and the timeline of your project? When are they going to receive your images? Um, the next thing is going to be your payment schedule. So you need to let the client know when they need to pay their invoice before you even start anything on the project. Like before you even sit down and map out any pre-production, get your deposit first. I always ask for a 50% deposit upfront before I do anything. And then I will ask my final payment before I release the photos. Now, the next really important thing that you have to include in your contract is your image license and who owns the copyright. So as a photographer, you own the copyright to your images unless you hand that over to your client. Um, to which if you do, they should be paying a pretty penny for that copyright. So instead, I give my clients a commercial license. And what this means is that I own the copyright, but they have a license to use the photos on their website, on their social media, in paid advertising. So they have that license there that they can use. So for me, those are really the key elements to put into your contract. There's obviously so much more that you should be putting into your contract, but if you wanna know what else that you should be putting in, then check out my course, become a brand photographer, all the information is in there for you. Okay, next question. How do you deal with imposter syndrome? Um, sometimes I don't. Sometimes I just cry. I just cry, feel sorry for myself and worry. I feel like I want to give up. doesn't happen that often anymore, but um, get off social media. That is probably my top tip. If you are feeling imposter syndrome, get off social media and stop looking at what other people are doing. Because at the end of the day, the only thing that matters is doing what makes you happy. And your circumstances are completely different to somebody else's circumstances. You cannot compare yourself to somebody else because you have no idea what they've gone through, what they're going through. Um, and you also can't compare, like if you're a beginner, you can't compare yourself to someone who's been in the industry for three to five years, for 10 years. Like that just doesn't make sense because you're at totally different levels. So I think the best advice that I have is just stop consuming for a little bit. Like take a day or two days off social media and just focus on you and creating what you wanna create and where you want your life to go, where you want your career to go. Like I love Instagram, I love it. I'm so grateful for it, but it is a breeding ground for comparison. Worry about yourself. That's, that's the best advice I have. <laughs> okay, so the next question is, what are your top five product photos of the year? This is difficult, but I have narrowed them down. So let's take a look. This one here is for my client, Cloud9 Candles. I had a vision for this photo and I nearly did not go through with, do, with editing this photo because I just, I just doubted it. It looked really shit. This is how it looked before I edited it. Yeah. Um, 
but I freaking love it. Like, I just think it came out perfectly. It's creative and I think it sells the product really well. So this is definitely a favorite. Okay, this one is another one of my favorites. And the reason for this being is because it's so clean. It's so clean and crisp. And that's just something that I really enjoy. And this was taken on one of my favorite locations on the Gold Coast, pink bathroom. I mean, the product is pink. This this product, it takes your tan off. It's a, it's a tanning bath bomb. So you put it in a bath and you soak in it for like 10 minutes. The water turns pink, by the way and it takes your tan off. I mean, how cool. So this is from my client Glow Dry and I think this was one of her favorite photos as well. And I just like, I just love it. I just really, really love it. All right, so my next photo is this one. Actually, there were so many good ones in this gallery. It was really hard to, to narrow these down, but I just love this beige background and the coconuts and the vanilla bean and just overall the composition and styling of this image. It just really worked out quite well. And um, I just think it's really eye-catching. So this is definitely a top five. All right, my next favorite photo is this one for my client, Hakko Skincare, which is an incredible product, by the way. Like, highly recommend. Um, I love the water splash. And it's something that I had tried to achieve for a really long time, like this style of photo. And I think this was the first time that I nailed it. I was like, yes. Like, yes. So this is definitely top five as well. All right, so this last one, again, for my client Cloud9, I was just really vibing this, this brand. I really love the overall composition of this photo and just how there are different levels. We've got the fruits, we've got that archway, love it. Um, and I don't know, the vibe, digging the vibes. All right, we took the Santa hat off. It just got a little bit annoying, so. How do you differentiate yourself in the sea of many other brand photographers? This is a great question. Um, essentially, I think one of the best things that you can do is to actually put yourself out there as a person. Instead of just like posting your work and you know hiding behind your product photography, it's really important to put your face out there for the world to see because what that does is it helps people relate to you as a person and I think even when it comes to business, and I know this is very true for me, um, I need to actually like gel with the other person's personality if I'm gonna work with them. And there have been times where I have no longer wanted to work with clients because of their personality. So it's really important that you put that out there for the world and you just be you. And that is what is gonna help you stand out amongst everybody else. And the other thing too is that I think it's really important to have a mindset of abundance. There is enough work to go around for everybody. And yes, this industry is only gonna get more saturated, but I don't think that matters. I think that if you are good at what you do, you put out good quality work, you put yourself out there, you can relate to people, you can build relationships, that is what matters. You are your secret weapon. All right, the next question is, do you charge per image or quote around an hourly rate? I do neither. <laughs> um, I quote based on the overall project. I used to quote based on a per image basis and I just found that this didn't make sense for me anymore because every project I was doing was completely different. Um, either pre-production would take me longer, I would be longer in shooting, so like 10 photos might take me four to five hours. Um, sometimes it might take me three hours, depending on the project. Post-production, um, it really depends as well on the complexity of what the client is looking for. So for example, if a client wants something that is airbrushed, that's gonna take longer. If they want a more complex retouch, that's gonna take longer and I have to charge for that. So I found that quoting on a per image basis, it was doing me absolutely no favors because I'd be doing all these things and not being compensated for the time and skills that I was putting into the project. So this is why I try and gather as much information up front 
about a project and about the brand so that I can actually quote accurately on an overall project basis. So I estimate how many hours this project is going to take me, but I also base it off the value that the client is receiving. So essentially what I do when someone inquires is I will give them my services guide and it has like a rough pricing guide in there. So basically it says like price will start from blah, 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 and you'll get like approximately this many photos. Um, and then I proceed to talk about these are all the variables that will affect your pricing. And I then say, um, look, if you'd like to take this further, let me know and I'll send through a creative brief. All right, next question. If a company that I tagged saw my product photo and wants to repost, should I charge? I think yes, yes. Um, because essentially they're promoting their products using your photo. And if you give it to them for free, you're not really getting anything in return. Like you've worked hard on doing that photo. And if they like that photo enough to want to post it on their Instagram or their Facebook or wherever, then they should pay for that. All right, next question. How do you create a picture with the same product with different colors repeated several times on it? Okay, I think you're referring to this photo here. Um, so this is actually all done in Photoshop and I have a tutorial on this exact photo inside my course, Become a Brand Photographer. It's a really fun way to display products and um, you know, it's not something that you really have to style in production, you just put it together in post. So if you wanna learn how to do this, then go and check out my course, Become a Brand Photographer. All right, next question is, what is the best ISO shutter speed and aperture for product photography? I don't really think there's a like specific best um, combination of settings. Um, I think it really depends on what you're shooting and what you're trying to achieve. As a rule of thumb, like as a guideline um, for your ISO, I would try and keep that as low as possible. I try and keep mine anywhere from 100 to 200 because the higher your ISO, the more noise and grain you will introduce into your photo and the less detail you will have. So when it comes to product photography, you want things really like beautifully crisp and clean. So if you're bumping up your ISO, so you will start to lose detail for your for your aperture um again it really depends on like on how many products you have so if you have say two products and one is slightly behind the other then you'll need to increase your aperture to ensure that you can get both in focus whereas if you are just shooting one product then an aperture of 2.8 will be really really good there are times when I've had to shoot at an aperture of 10 because I just have so many products in the shot and I need more in focus. All right, guys, so that's it. Thank you so much for sending in all your questions. You guys had some really good ones. Um, obviously, there are so many answers that are answered inside my course, Become a Brand Photographer. So if you are serious about pursuing a career in brand photography, I highly recommend go and check out the course. Um, and if you have questions on it, please let me know. We are adding a whole new round of content to the course early next year and we are also adding product videography as well yep we're going to teach you how to make product videos so that's going to be a whole new section to the course you have lifetime access when you purchase it and you also have free access to all the updates that we make in the future so i'm so excited for all the new content that's going to come next year but i hope you guys have a very merry christmas and a happy new year and you take some time off for yourself to spend with your family and friends but without further ado, that's it for 2020. I'll see you guys next year.